Hello and welcome to another episode of The Dentist Show. And I'm right here in Accra to meet one man called Kofi Anku. He is one of the directors of IE Mensa Park. Now they say real estate industry in Africa is booming. Well, I'm here to find out whether it really and truly is booming. Let's find out. You. I'm looking for coffee, uncle. Coffee, uncle. Okay. Okay. She has given us the permission, so we are going to open the door for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hi, coffee. Welcome. This is beautiful. Thank you. Honestly, it's really nice. Glad you like it. I do. I can't believe we've been talking all this while, and I haven't managed to come. But I'm so glad I'm here now. At long last. At long last. <laughs> coffee. We're at your what your business venture, yes. which you're a director for That's and right. a shareholder. That's correct. So three people come together to build something like this in Ghana. Well, it's actually a partnership between two companies. Okay. So I've got a U.S. company okay. uh, that's like a private equity fund okay. that's financing the development and that we've joined together okay. as a JV. So our company, Mercury Estates, okay. is a local Ghanaian partner. Okay. And then our American partner is Black Ivy. Okay. But why, why real estate? What made you go into real estate? Was there something that you came across and you were like, yes, let's do this? Or somebody approached you? How did it all come about? Well, my family has been in, involved in real estate. <laughs> So this was something that we started about uh, 20 years ago. Your family were doing the business for like over 20 years. That's right. But it doesn't mean that you would also end up doing it. What was your passion to? What, what made you personally get involved in it? Sure. Um, we actually started investing in real estate in Ghana, buying land. Okay. And it is all we were, we're interested in solving problems. Okay. And as you know, Owning land in Ghana is always challenging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you've got court cases, yep. you've got land guards, yep. you've got encroachers. Yep. So for me as a kid coming out of university, mm -hmm. it was exciting. Okay. Um, so this was a problem that uh, we were trying to get our arms around and okay. it's really the basis of, of wealth creation. Okay. Uh, so if you're looking at building strong Ghanaian families, mm -hmm. they need to be able to own something. Mm. They need to be able to own a piece of land mm. um, where they can set up their families. Mm. So and then, you know, we're talking about, you know, um, land and the frustration alone of even getting a title in your name. Sure. It's, it's a big deal. It's hard work. And you've been able to go through all those challenges to build something like this yeah absolutely amazing um, we, we work we work with uh, some very good lawyers okay. and uh, it takes a lot of time mm. Kofi, land issue in not just ghana in, probably in africa sure it's not an easy one land guards like you said even getting the name the title in your name is quite challenging that's right how have you been able to maneuver to build something like this it's required a lot of patience a lot of time and and uh what i believe in ghana is the key is effective collaboration mm. you need to have the right partners and then you can do amazing things mm. so for us it's more about a project of nation building okay. uh, and real estate being a route to that okay yeah and you're right you, you know you're three three directors right that's right and you've come with another company you've come together to, to do it because you could have said i want to do it alone you, but you, you, you just you can't do it alone mm. you need to collaborate effectively uh, you need to bring in people with different skill sets mm. To, to achieve something worthwhile. Okay, so how do you see the market at the moment in Ghana? Do you think real estate is booming? Do you think it's dropping? How are you seeing the whole real estate? The market's changing. Okay. For a long time, you could put anything in the market and people would eat it up. Mm -hmm. Now people are becoming more discerning. Mm. People are looking for quality. Mm. Uh, people are price sensitive. Um, so there are options. Mm. So we're really now competing on quality, competing on price. Mm. Uh, if you can deliver a product, particularly in the middle income market, there are, there are different sec sectors of the market. You've got folks that are buying to rent as investments. Yeah. You've got a lot of Ghanaians in the diaspora, which yeah. is uh, you know, something, a group of, of, of fantastic people that you're working with. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to plug into Ghana. Mm. So mm. for them, they want to contribute to Ghana, but mm. they don't want to have a drop in the standard of mm. living. Mm. And there's no reason that Ghanaian real estate should be marked by mediocrity. Yeah. It can be known for quality. It does, it's not more expensive to build a wall that's straight. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the same blocks, sure. it's the same paint. It's just a, it's a, it's a attention to detail. It's true. So what would you say your target market is? Is it people in the diaspora? Or is it um, Ghanaians middle income that are here? What is your target market? Well, we work with a variety of partners. Okay. 
and I'm committed to the affordable housing market. I think Ghanaians that live in Ghana should be able to afford a house. Mm. Uh, this product is a higher, um, higher end of the market. Okay. It's not the highest. Yeah. Uh, we're still coming in for a three bedroom house under $200,000, which is, which is reasonable yeah. for a certain segment of the market. Mm. Mm. But I think as developers, as landowners, we need to be doing better. Okay. We need to find a product that we can put into the market for around 30,000 mm. USD mm. That, uh, that Ghanaian families, and yeah. also the mortgage component is key. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a key part of affordability. Even yeah. in places like the UK and the mm -hmm. States, people aren't buying houses with cash. Yeah, it's true. They, they can access loans yeah. at, at, uh, at reasonable rates. Mm. And and that's, uh, that's one of the issues, I guess, here over here is the fact that loans and re loans repayment are very high sure. for individuals. Absolutely. And so for anyone to come in, they'll probably have to be uh, someone from the diaspora, someone here that has that access or that capital to be able to buy, am I correct? Sure, for the time being. Mm. Um, but I think as we get more traction in the market, we can attract more capital. Okay. And uh, instead of people getting their mortgages from high street banks, mm. developers may be in a position to help finance the buyers. Okay. So that's something that I'm working on okay, as well. That sounds good. You know, so we'll so, give okay. you a period of time, maybe four years mm. to pay. Um, and then there'll also maybe a, a rental component. Okay. So we have to be creative. Yeah, definitely. So something like this, this apartment, it's absolutely stunning. It's something that I would want to buy. Fantastic. Maybe two. <laughs> I, I love um, the sound of that. <laughs> um, how would you describe the security? Because people sure. like myself, coming from the UK, we're, we're conscious of about security and all of those kind of issues. What is it that you're offering? What sure. is it you're offering? Sure, sure. See, Denta, I think we actually designed this with security in mind. Okay. So you've got a gated community with, with limited and controlled access. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we were looking at in order to really deliver on price mm. is the type of typology of the, of the architecture. Okay. So we've introduced a townhouse concept okay. to this part of the market. Okay. Uh, typically, you find townhouses in the middle of the city. Yeah. This is a bit further out, yeah. uh, but we've decided to go with the townhouse uh, architecture mm. because it also helps with security. Mm. Um, because you also have all of your neighbors who are close yeah. and they can see what's going on yeah. in, you know, in your neighborhood, on your street. Yeah. You're not marooned in the middle of nowhere, um, left to your own devices. So we've okay. got a security company that we work with. Okay. Um, we're, we're putting in CCTV cameras as well. Okay. And then, you know, there's, there's limited access to the unit. Okay. For some of us that have four kids, three kids, we are very conscious about when we're buying somewhere that has a park or yes. has like a, you know, little swimming pool. Absolutely. Um, what are you guys offering? See, Denta, we've actually dedicated two acres okay. in the center of the whole development mm -hmm. for the Central Park area. Okay. So we've got a, a clubhouse. Okay. Um, an open space for kids to play, okay. a sports area, mm -hmm. and also a pool. Okay. How, how deep is the pool? <laughs> <laughs> is there different levels? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Could be another, another thing that people look out for is having accessible shops that they can go and buy stuff. In London, we have like Tesco's close by. Of course. So um, when we come home, we don't want to go out to somewhere that's like far away, 10 minutes drive. Is there stuff? that's going to be around for us to go to the shop to buy uh, ab milk. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We've dedicated a retail area okay. uh, within the development that's going to be accessible uh, not just to the residents but to the wider community okay. so that you, you'll have a pharmacy, you'll have a gym, okay. you'll have uh, a place where you can buy a few things, a convenience shop. Yeah? Yep, Excellent. absolutely. So you're doing 218. That's right. So if people want to buy, so if I want to buy, what is the process? Do I have to put a deposit? Do I have to pay? cash up front, what is the process like? We've got cash buyers okay. that are interested in paying the whole thing at once, but we also have some terms okay. uh, so that you can pay quarterly. Okay. Um, and then we also work with the mortgage companies. So we've got a very good relationship with several mortgage banks in Ghana okay. that we can introduce you to if you're interested in the purchase. Okay. So including Ghana Home Loans, we work with, with Republic Bank, we work with Standard Bank as well. Okay. So if I want to buy and I say to you guys, Kofi, I want to buy, but I want to rent it. Do you guys rent it out for me, or do I have to look for my own? We actually have a list of people who are looking to rent these units already. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. Uh, renting is not going to be an it's issue. It's not an issue. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I want a little tour. Sure. I want you to show me around. Obviously, this is the living space, yes. which is really nice. 
um, and then we've got a little dining for the for the family. That's and right. We've got the kitchen. So there's another kitchen that you can do your fufu, a ben kwai, That's right. And for the, the hardcore Ghanaian hardcore cooking. Hardcore Ghanaian cooking. That's right. Well, we're going to go for a short commercial break. We'll be back to view the property and get to know who Coffee truly is. Gubit Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Gubra card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 40% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Gubra card can also be used as a prepaid visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Call us or WhatsApp us on 0245-156705. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba Card, the best discount card in Ghana. Imperial Homes Ghana and Great Britain has carved a niche for itself within the real estate industry as the premier provider of luxury homes in Ghana and England with a mission to provide safe, good value, modern housing and personalized estate management services to its clients and customers. All our homes meet the lifetime home standard as well as the highest standards of engineering excellence, safety, environmental sustainability and cost efficiency. Imperial Homes, a signature of luxury. Welcome back from that short commercial break. I'm still joined by Kofi at Aiyi Mensa Park. And Kofi, I want to find out is if I buy, okay, or when I buy, I, can I customize the place into my own type of feel? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so what we did is we've provided uh, built-in wardrobes. Okay. We've got a partnership with Bosch. Okay. So the appliances come pre-installed. Okay. Um, but if you want to you know, do your own painting or if you're doing your own furnishing, that's, that's fine as well. Okay. And then if I don't want to do my own furnishing, do you have different styles that I can pick from? Do you have a, like a booklet that Absolutely. shows different and then you guys will install that? I just have to pay for it and then That's you right. guys can do that. Yeah, we have a similar thing with the with the solar packages as well. Okay. So this house right now uh, runs on, on solar power. 90% 90, 90 of the power is generated wow. using solar panels. So okay. we've, we've got uh, our battery pack conveniently installed mm -hmm. underneath the stairs. Okay. So these, these batteries uh, power the whole. Wow whole unit and we've got an inverter unit over here wall mounted fantastic. as well fantastic because as we know electricity is very expensive and so you guys thinking of solar right now is a fantastic way for somebody to save money absolutely okay so this is three bedroom yes so all the end units are three beds okay and the mid terraces are two beds okay so and this do you have any four beds we've got a few four beds okay so you do basically three beds two beds and some four, four bedrooms beds. correct okay. that's right so this is a three bedroom that we're going to have a look at. I love all these type of paintings as well. This yeah, is lovely. All down here? All, all Ghanaian artists. Excellent. Do you get them to make it for you or you just go and buy them? We've got a few artists that we work with. Okay. Yep. Okay. So th this is the children's room. got the bunk beds installed mm. and you've got a nice big window so you can yeah. pull in enough light um, you know so the kids are working on their homework yeah okay so there's another bedroom over here another bed and a shared bathroom, shared bathroom. with a tub okay. and this is the master bedroom this is the master bedroom okay. and we've got a balcony right off the yeah. units mm -hmm. This is very important for us, lady. I need to. That's right. Plenty mm. of storage. Plenty. There's some up there as well. Excellent. Fantastic. And Dante, I think you'll like the master bath as well. Yeah. I'm sure I will. I know. I like everything so far. So this is the. So this is ensuite. Ensuite. We've got the his and hers. His and hers sink. sink. Yes. So when one sink is untidy, you know whose it is. This is fantastic. This is brilliant. Okay. This, this could save a few marriages. And do you, know, do you know what? I love the lighting. Because us women doing makeup, perfect. 
Absolutely. Perfect. We okay. spend a lot of time making sure that we get the tiling right, mm. that all the finishing is clean, yeah. uh, that you're basically getting world-class standards Excellent. Here, here in Ghana. Fantastic. Love it. And then I want to see the balcony. Little... Let me take you out. Mm -hmm. I love the view. So have people started moving in already? We're actually moving in some of the buyers today. Yep, yep. It's exciting. Fantastic. Well, let's go downstairs and then we're going to talk a bit, a bit, little bit about you. Okay. So we're still here at the Ai Mensa Park and I want to find out more about Kofi. Kofi's married, he's got three kids and as a woman, we always ask the women who are working, how do you balance family life and, and working life? Um, but the men don't usually get this question. So I'm going to ask it to you today, sure. Kofi. How do you manage that? Because obviously, you've got the family, you've got the wife, but you're still an entrepreneur and doing business. How do you manage the, the two? Well, it's, it's interesting. My, my wife's probably Ghana's first Oxford Law PhD candidate. Woo! Excellent! Uh, so she's doing things that I couldn't dream of doing myself. <laughs> <laughs> so my job is to support her. Excellent. So Excellent. We, we actually homeschool our boys. Oh, really? So I've got my boys here with me in Accra. Okay. While Excellent. she's studying. So you're actually looking after the kids here? I do, yeah. Which is nice. You don't... Nowadays, I, I guess times is changing. Nowadays, you do find men looking after the kids, but um, usually it's the other way around, right? Yeah. But yeah. times are changing and you're supporting your wife to make sure that she finishes school and she does well. She's a rock star. Wow. Uh, she, was, she did her master's there a couple of years back mm. and basically aced all of her courses. Wow. So, you know. Excellent. But you obviously, you're not from the UK. You're from America. Schooled in New York. That's right. Um, and decided to come back home. Um, but what made you come back home to Ghana? I want to. I want to know what was it? Just the the business side. You, you got um, the investors to come, and you decided to come back home, or you just coming back and forth and felt that you know this was the right time to actually move. It's an interesting question. Um, I think oftentimes when people talk about Ghana, mm. they think about it as a developing country. Mm. But the truth is, Ghana does some extraordinary things better than other places. Mm. I think mm. our families, our our family structure, our extended family system is. Ex is Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what allows me to be able to in be involved uh, very deeply in raising the kids, mm. as well as building different types of businesses. Mm. Uh, so the culture is extraordinary, and it's an exciting time to be in Ghana. Mm. You're here when the country is literally being built. Okay. You know, if you're if you're in New York, mm. you are moving. Mm. You know, you're you're in an office somewhere. Yeah. You you're not actually deciding what a whole neighborhood is going to look like. Yeah. But you know, we say that, but then it is sometimes frustrating to work in, in Ghana or Africa. Um, and people in the diaspora, a lot of people have come back and a lot of people have gone back because sure. of the frustration. Sure. What would be some of your advice that you would give to those people who are still thinking of coming home but are too scared to take that leap of faith? I would say that it's harder than you think it, it is, okay. um, but it's worth it. So you've got to stay in the same spot. You've got to make sure that you keep your, your, your consumption low mm. so that you can survive mm. during the lean seasons. Mm. But if you stick with it, mm. then you'll be rewarded. Mm. So don't think of it as a holiday, because obviously sometimes when you come for Christmas, you spend, you're going out, you're, you know, you're having a good time. Sure. So, but when you're coming to stay, I guess you have to have a different mindset. Absolutely. Right? It can't be like that all the time. That's right. That's Excellent. right. Yeah. So, ABP, tell me a bit about that. You're an executive. That's right. Um, what, it, what is that about? Well, that's another company. It's a construction firm okay. that I'm involved with. Okay. And we built the First Lady's Mother Baby Unit. Oh, fantastic. At Kath okay. in Kumasi. Oh. So there was this horrific situation where we were losing up to five babies a day. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen any of the photos, but yeah, there were it. literally three babies in one incubator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a, a dire mm -hmm. scenario. The First Lady pulled the whole country together, yeah. raised uh, almost three million USD, wow. Wow. Um, and we, we designed and built the facility and built wow. in, uh, in about six months. Wow. Handed over six the keys, months. yes. And are you doing any other things in different parts of Ghana, or is this? Yes. Okay. So we've started a similar operation at Kolibu, where we're building uh, the PIKU, which is the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. Mm. Right. Because 
We did a campaign actually for Google Foundation um, to raise money for an incubator. Mm -hmm. in, and we did um, a survey to find out, you know, how many hospitals actually needed incubators. Um, and we just gave them a one day deadline. We had a hundred emails from different hospitals that didn't have any incubators in Ghana. All, all of my sons were born in Ghana. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so for us it's personal. Uh, mm. my, son, my, my last born was in a Niku facility. Wow. And wow. if somebody hadn't made the donation mm. to renovate that facility, mm. I remember a few years back, there mm. it wasn't there. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there was one one incubator, and if if it was full and you needed those services, then you had a problem. So we live here. We no, no one's going to make it better for us. We need to make we it better, better for, for ourselves. ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Kofi, what would be your advice to a young person that wants to set up a business? Mm -hmm. um, not sure which way to go, um, but wants to do something, but is not sure. sure. What sure. would your advice be? You've got to study the market. Okay. You know, it's not enough to simply have a dream. You've mm. got to be able to provide a service or a product that people are prepared to pay for. Okay. okay. So I'm really keen to bring the kids down to Ghana because mm. being talking to you, I'm like, I need to do this because that, I'm that's one the way to person go. that keeps going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm indecisive about you know bringing my kids to to Ghana. Sure. But now that I've seen this in the area, I'm thinking actually this could work. But in terms of schools. Are there good schools around this particular area for me to there be able to? Because my I've got a ten year old, an eight year old, a six and, and a one year old. Do I have all of those in the area? Our kids are, are almost the same age. Oh, okay. Ten, nine okay. and five. Oh wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. Excellent. No, there are wonderful schools in the area. Yeah. Uh, very close by there are international schools, okay. there are primary schools. Okay. Uh, even for university, Ashesi University, which is probably the yeah. premier yeah. Uh, university in West Africa, is yeah. about 20 minutes away. Okay. So there are lots of options. Lots of options. So I think I'm going to go for option number four, which is a four-bedroom house right here. And I think the next time that I do an interview, I'm probably going to be doing it right here <laughs> in my place. At home. So at home. At home. So, Kofi, thank you so much for joining me on The Dentist Show. Dentist, thank you. Um, I'm sure that you're going to get a lot of calls and people are going to be coming. And this place is going to be sold out. But we'll start another and then, one. And start another one. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. See you next time. Stay blessed.